Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Google Hangout session. We're real excited today. We've got four awesome Tableau data bloggers joining us today live. So we would love to just spend a little bit of time with them, and I'd like to thank every one of them for joining us. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of things relative to data blogging today. Um, so whether you're just getting started with a data blog or you already you, uh, have a blog and you'd like to know um, some tips and things like that, then that's what you're here for, and, and you'll get that. And so we're excited. We're going to talk about everything from getting started to keeping momentum going. We'll talk about the people side of blogging, so making connections, and what does success mean to these folks, as well as some words of wisdom. And with that, I'd like to just go through a quick round of introductions. Um, so actually, there's three of us from Tableau, and then there's four from the uh, overall um, kind of community of bloggers. So we're going to go through a quick little round of introductions. I'll start it off. So uh, I'm Ben Jones, and I live here in Seattle. I work for Tableau, and I'm a Tableau Public Product Manager. Um, I started a blog, Data Remixed, about two and a half years ago. And what kind of things I blog about? You know, I blog about things that are of interest to me, so lots of different topics, but they're all sort of data topics, um, and they all sort of center on data visualization. And something most people don't know about me, um, everybody, I think, that reads my blog knows that, um, that I'm Canadian, so that's, that doesn't really apply anymore. But uh, maybe what they don't know about me is that, um, let's see, I, I love to hike. So I, uh, I take my kids, Aaron and Simon, uh, in the, the hiking trails all around uh, this beautiful area that I moved to last year. So that's me. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Andy. Oh, OK. I thought you were going to do all the Tableau people first. No, right, let's go. So, yeah, we'll start with you. Fine. OK. So uh, my name is Andy Kriebel, and um, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area and work for Facebook. Um, I, the, one of the cool things about working at Facebook is we get to make up our own titles. So I call myself a data visualization guru, because uh, I couldn't think of anything better. And um, let's see. So I started my blog in, I believe it was August of 2009. And I started it because I didn't see anybody else with one. So um, I wanted a place where I could kind of document what I was learning along the way. And um, I always felt like if other people read it, great. But uh, my primary purpose for starting it was to um, as a diary for myself. Uh, as far as the, the things that I blog about, um, I used to do a lot of makeovers of different charts and things that I would see on the, uh, on the internet. And uh, now I do a combination of that and tips and tricks. And um, sometimes I create my own visualizations for stuff that I've been doing, like a 30-day push-up challenge. Um, and something that people don't know about me. I grew up in Philadelphia. Uh, but I was never in New York City, which is only about two hours away until about six years ago. Awesome. And also, Andy is joining us from Israel today. So he's uh, out and about traveling, and so we're glad to have Andy on the call there. Um, so we're going to move now to Jewel. So why don't you introduce yourself, Jewel? All right. My name is Jewel. I live in Seattle. I work for Tableau as a Tableau public data person. Um, it's basically the best job ever. Actually, that's what Peter called it. And um, my blog, the reason I started it, I actually started it about two years ago as a way to bury Google links that were embarrassing. So I just wanted to get something that had my name all over it. So that would be the first thing that came up in the Google results. And I didn't actually post in it ever um, until I started working at Tableau. And then I had a lot more to talk about. So the kinds of things I blog about are mostly visits relating to pop culture, just because that's what I find interesting. And something most people don't know about me is that I am obsessed with the TV show Glee. So much so that I started taking tap dance lessons so that I could try out for regional musicals. And she is an awesome knitter um, and very talented in many ways. So, Jewel, thank you very much. We're going to switch now to 
to Kelly Martin. So Kelly, my fellow Canadian, why don't you take it over? So yeah, I'm Kelly Martin. I'm in Vancouver, Canada, which is not snowy. It's lovely. And um, my blog is Biz Candy, and that's now my job and my employer. I've gone <laughs> independent consulting. And what kind of things do I blog about? Well, I started the blog initially just to learn Tableau. Silly me, when I downloaded Tableau Public, I thought I had to create a blog account. And so Blogger took, what, two seconds to... And anyways, I just carried on from there. And it was about documenting my learning. Then it's been about, lately, it's more about um, answering questions that keep coming up from fellow analysts that I know about. And let's see. What don't people know about? Oh, I make pottery. Bad pottery. It's <laughs> good pottery. Lots and lots of bad pottery. Is that a lizard or a gecko? It's a gecko. Nice. Yeah. Never send a lizard to do a gecko's job. All right. Thanks, Kelly. We're going to switch now to Peter Jilks. So, Peter, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi. Okay. I'm Peter Jilks. I live in New York City. I moved here uh, about six months ago from London. I work for Slalom Consultant, Slalom Consulting, who are a Tableau partner, so I get to do Tableau in my day-to-day -day job. Um, I started my blog actually in 2011 with the intention of doing Tableau public visas on MBA data. I made one pretty terrible viz and then never touched it again for two years. And then in 2013, um, I started again. I think I started because it was a Tableau public competition that I wanted to enter, and it seemed like a good idea to start the, restart the blog. And then at that point, kind of it, for some reason I stuck with it and it carried on. So I uh, like to blog about two things. I um, make visits in Tableau Public from data that I just find interesting. Usually that's just like a list from Wikipedia and I try and make it more visually appealing. And the other thing is I try and do some tips and tricks as well. Mix those in as well. All right. And what's something that most people don't know about you, Peter? Um, when I was younger, I uh, danced on stage with the Sugar Hill Gang, which is uh, something that not everybody can say. <laughs> You have to Google that. <laughs> is there a YouTube video about that dance or no? Uh, this is before YouTube. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Peter. Let's switch over to Steve now. So, Steve Wexler, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Steve Wexler. I'm uh, speaking from Briarcliff Manor, New York, about 45 minutes outside of Manhattan. Um, I've put together the blog almost exactly three years ago. I had just been laid off and decided to put out my own shingle as a consultant and so I did it to, at first to show the world hey this is what I can do and about a year later I realized I need to be doing something to help contribute to the community. The community, it's an incredible community of people out there that are very generous with their time and expertise so I try once a month to produce something that is useful or others or that I've encountered in my own practice. Um, let's see, something interesting about me. I spend half my time doing data visualization and consulting and the other half I'm a bass player and band leader and I was the um, leader of my older daughter's Girl Scout troop for six years. Awesome. All right, and then bringing up the rear here, Mike Plasinski is going to introduce himself. Take it away, Mike. Hi, everyone. My name is Mike Klasinski. Um, I'm a data analyst here at Tableau on the Tableau Public team. Um, I live just about five minutes from our office, so it's a wonderful bicycle ride in every morning. Um, I started my blog earlier this month. It's called Dots on a Screen. Um, it's a little bit of a cryptic name, but the idea behind it is that um, you know there's pixels on a screen, and what I really enjoy doing is building visualizations which typically have dots on a screen. And then I also like taking pictures, which again are dots on a screen. So that's kind of the motivation behind that. Um, and then that's also what I mainly blog about. Um, right now I have just a few blog posts up there, but I will be including more photos for the future. The idea behind my blog is to document kind of my learning of Tableau, and also to be a resource to look back at in the future and see pictures I've taken so that my family can take a look at that as well. Um, something most people don't know about me is that 
I'm actually quite the handyman. Um, I'm not quite a professional contractor, but uh, I have been known to completely strip a bathroom out to the studs and um, you know, hang sheetrock and tile and grout and do plumbing, electrical, you name it, I can do it. So it's a little bit about me. All right, right. come on over, please. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll come to good work. Um, all right, great. So now we got a good sense of who's on the call. Um, so you probably are familiar with a lot of these people or their names at least and their work on the web, which um, which is great. And you know what we want to find out first is, and you, some of you touched on it already, but just the process of getting started sometimes can feel a little bit daunting. Um, maybe there's some roadblocks or hurdles that you're trying to get over uh, relative to some technical aspects, or maybe there's some roadblocks just in your, in your own personal life about doing this. And it can feel scary sometimes. So what I want to know from you all at the beginning here is just what was your experience around getting started? Why did you get started? And what was challenging uh, about it? So um, why don't we just kind of open it up? Does anybody have some just really uh, sort of uh, strong feelings about this just process of starting your blog? <laughs> so, okay, I'll go. go. All right. Oh, okay. Um, the the thing was the voice. Um, trying to decide whether it's my personal voice or is this going to be a professional voice or what. And it's pretty close to my personal voice. It ended up being. It's not entirely because you know I wouldn't be allowed to post some of the things <laughs> I say. But that was the hardest part. Was how much is too much to tell? How much is um, just self-congratulatory and you're, you know, being needy for attention. That was it. You go, Peter. Yeah, um, I was going to say my hardest thing about getting started was just um, not believing that anyone would want to read it. I was kind of like, why, um, for a long time thinking, I could put the effort into doing this, but is anybody actually going to read it? And I thought, probably not. But then I thought, well, I'll just do it anyway, because I'll probably enjoy the process. And it turns out quite a few people did read it, so um, it's definitely worth that first step. But I think that kind of fear that you're going to do something and no one's ever going to look at it um, was was hanging over there for me. Are you supposed to tag the next person? <laughs> me? <laughs> yeah, go on then, Andy. Hi. <laughs> you want me to go? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, like, I, I, I kind of mentioned a little bit in my introduction, but I started blogging because, uh, well, first, there were a couple reasons. One, I couldn't find any other resources out there when I started mine. I didn't know of any other Tableau blogs. Um, but I also didn't start it as a Tableau blog. It's a data visualization blog because I don't want to be, I don't want to be um, focused just entirely on one tool when I, when I do my blogging. Um, but, but I started it as, like I said, as a diary for myself. Um, I was reading a lot, and I wanted to practice, but I also like writing, so I figured I might as well kind of do the two things at the same time, and that way I can, um, I can document how I did something. So if I need to remember how I did something, like in Tableau, I forget how I did stuff all the time. So I search my blog, and I find how I did it before. So, um, you know, that was my, my primary reason was I don't really write for other people. It's great that other people read it, but I really do it for myself as a repository. Um, and it's just kind of turned out that people read it. So um, I think that it covers all the questions. Oh, what was my first post about? My first post was about, um, was about pie charts. Um, and it's kind of, uh, you know, they're my good friend. <laughs> 3D pie charts? <laughs> It was not 3D. It had about 700 slices in it, though, I think. <laughs> not quite that many, but. So uh, who do I need? Mike, I'll tag you next. You're next to me on the pictures. All right, so uh, why did I start blogging in the first place? Well, uh, I started at Tableau about a year and four months ago, and I've always wanted to document and share with the community kind of things I've learned. Um, but I never really got up the courage to start a blog because similar to Peter, I, would, I just thought no one would ever want to read it. I mean, who's going to read something I'm posting on the internet? There's so much other content out there. Um, but Ben Jewell and a couple other people told me, you know what, just start a blog. Um, we peer pressure it in. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 
my thought was, you know, at the very least, it'll be some a record for me to go back and see kind of how I progress. And also, my parents and family will be able to go on and see pictures and see kind of what I do at work. Um, so that's how I started it. Uh, the most difficult or technical aspect of starting my blog was kind of setting up the, the whole CMS. I decided to go with a fairly new platform called Ghost. Um, it's something actually that Ben found probably a week before I started my blog. He sent out an email saying, hey, you guys, check this out. And I went on there, looked around, and it seemed pretty straightforward. Um, but I actually had to look on a lot of different blogs to figure out how to start my blog. Uh, but once I got that going, it's pretty straightforward now. Uh, and then what was my first post about? I did a kind of a Hello World post, so I introduced myself, described <laughs> what my expectations will be, and uh, that was my first post. But my first real piece of content was um, about a tool called uh, Negative Screen. So what it allows you to do is just invert the colors on your screen. So if you're staring at Tableau all day, instead of uh, being baked by this white screen, you can change it to a dark screen. Uh, so it saves your eyes, kind of like in Photoshop. All right. With that, Steve, you tag your it. All right. So um, uh, fear was the motivator for me, that of uh, being unemployed, so felt that I needed to get the word out um, as to what I was doing. Um, combination of things were daunting, the technical hurdles of using the particular tool. Um, but I did feel that I had a lot of knowledge and expertise in certain areas, so I started writing about what I knew. And if you look at business intelligence as being a niche and data visualization as a niche within that, this is about 19 sub-niches down from there, which is uh, my first post was on Likert scale data. Um, have, and it is pronounced Likert, not Likert. Um, having to do with survey data and that led to writing a whole bunch of things about here's how you visualize survey data and it has served me extremely well the the the, the whole notion of if you write a blog post that are, are that contain useful information or not self-promotional um, and get the stuff out there I'm getting just tons and tons of work as a result of, of writing these blog posts on, on survey data so if you have something useful out there and you write about it and people find out about it people will beat a path to your door and I know Steve we uh, I know I talked to you about this before but letting everybody else know we actually use a model for our surveys, uh, visualizing our surveys internally at Facebook that looks almost identical to what Steve uh, produces. So um, Heather Torres that works with us is a big fan of his work. Oh, Heather is the best. Um, Andy, I want to amplify something that you said about reading your own blog posts. Um, there's a particular technique, you know, that that, uh, that kind of Joe Mako, and he's a name that everyone's going to be banding about, I'm sure, at some point today, helped develop of uh, divergent stack bar charts where the stack bars are kind of staggered left and right to show sentiment. Yeah. You know, I wrote this once, and, you know, I just read my own blog post when I have to do it again as opposed yeah. to trying to figure out how it's done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, that's kind of that's similar to what Mike was saying as well. You know, along the along the lines of also being a repository for us, I think it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, I'll go way back and see how I was designing and creating stuff back uh, in the early days of my blog, and I'm like, man, that was some seem seem like pretty crappy content. But uh, so it's neat to kind of see how you mature <laughs> in the field as well. Well, I can definitely relate to that as well. I mean, there's so many times I've gone back to my own blog post to get a reminder about how exactly to do something. And with regard to that survey one, I, I send that out all the time, Steve. Even last week, I remember emailing someone you know, asking me what's a, a good way to do survey data. So it's such a useful, it almost becomes this useful reference that lives out there that you can point to and people can point to. And like you say, you know, there's some benefits to you for that as well. So that's awesome. And I think the, so uh, Jewel also, let's, why don't you weigh in on this one? Oh, no, you already did, right? So everybody's gone through getting started, I think. Maybe, maybe just me. I don't think she has. <laughs> oh, no, well, why don't you go for it? Why don't, so, yeah, why don't you talk a little bit? Right, well, I kind of I said why I started my website in general. I started blogging because um, when I started at Tableau, I made some visits, and Ben said, try to get them on the Internet somehow, and that was just the easiest way to do it. So um, the very first post I ever made was a really crappy biz 
about last year's Grammys, and I know that Steve told me not I'm not allowed to talk about the Grammys, so I won't say anything more about that. <laughs> But uh, I think you will have most, hell to pay, woman. <laughs> I think the most difficult thing about starting once I actually got momentum and started posting regularly was actually what Kelly was saying is kind of like I this blog is basically my job, and how much of me can I put in it? And I mean. When you first read it, it was very like, here's the viz, here's the findings, and that was it. And now you're going to go there, and it's just like animated GIFs of Pokemon everywhere. So I got over that eventually. Now we're all sending around uh, memes and whatnot. We're having, <laughs> so Jules definitely have an influence on the folks here in the office. Um, hey, there's a couple comments here I'm just noticing. I just want to call out. So Chris Gerard commented in and said, I started Tableau Friction friction for the same reason Andy expressed as a way to keep track of things for myself. It was a real surprise to learn that people were reading and paying attention to it. That seems like it's a common thread and you know even for myself I can relate to that. This whole notion of you know like Kelly started off, what's my voice and who is even going to care? Um, but if you really add your own unique perspective and try to focus on doing things that are interesting to you and useful, uh, people people value you know get value out of that as well. So that's some good encouragement for the folks out there that are you know wondering whether and so I guess maybe if you felt that way out there to the folks listening, maybe you know who's going to care about me and my thoughts, just know that I'm sure you can relate to the people here and you've really benefited from what they've produced. So um, there's a few questions on here before we move to the next topic that I think are relevant. I'm just checking the Q&A panel over here. Um, one is um, what target works better in your first initial post, a specialized audience or a more general audience? So that's from Arturo Valencia. What do you all think about that? I guess it depends if you've got a particular topic that you're really interested in. So <clears throat> if you think about someone like um, Ramon Martinez and his blog, you know, that's all focused on health stuff because that's his passion and that's his, his work. But a lot of people read it because it's just excellent tableau work. Um, so I don't know if there's, there's probably, I guess in this day and age of the internet as well, there's probably no subject that's too niche that doesn't have an audience. Um, I mean, we're probably living examples of that right now. Um, <laughs> So I I don't know I would just go for whatever interests you and, and don't worry too much about um, you know how big the audience is. For I think you have to establish yourself as a, a presence before you become a generalist. Um, you have to I, I want to know that this person has some certain expertise mm -hmm. and has established some credibility, and at that point if they write start writing about general topics, I'm more likely to um, listen to what they have to say. So I'm kind of leaning towards if there's something you know something special about or have an insight, and then they'll, they'll, there'll be people out there who will, will appreciate your writing about it. So write about what you specialize in. I'm right. thinking of um, yeah. Paul's uh, new blog. He started it from the perspective of an IT guy and how he implemented Tableau Server. And it just was fascinating. And it's very specific to that little area. Now it's branching out. I think one of the big missing areas, speaking of specialties, is there's very few people that write about Tableau Server. And maybe that's mm -hmm. because because it's not really, there's really nothing you can do to it. Um, maybe, one, maybe one of these days Tableau will actually make it fast. But um, <laughs> other than that... <laughs> I had to get that in, Ben. This is also the ideas section. Yeah, we're recording this, <laughs> yeah. so we'll, we'll transfer everything over for you. Don't worry. <laughs> no, I mean, um, I, I, it'd be really um, interesting to see if there's way. There was one post recently by um, you guys. You guys posted where somebody had customized the front end for the Tableau portal. Um, I forget who that was. Um, was it Mark? Mark Jackson? Yeah. Yeah. And um, it was really neat to see that somebody actually did something like that because it started giving me some ideas of things we could do to make the Tableau server experience for people when they log on to it better. So if there's anybody that knows a lot about Tableau server, that's a huge area that is, uh, has a lot of uh, gaps right now, I guess. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, let's see if I can find another question here relative to starting. 
This is a quick detail from Paul Chapman. Did you have to get sign-off from your employer? This is the one, uh, your first question that came through. Did you have to get sign-off at all uh, to start your blog? Um, I could answer that. Um, when I started at Facebook, well, when I was at Coke, um, I didn't even ask. Uh, but when I was at, uh, when I started at Facebook, they brought that up during orientation. They just said, if you write your own blog, you just have to register it with them so they know it exists. Um, they don't own the content or anything, but you just have, we just had to let them know that, you know, and of course I can't write about anything confidential, but, um, yeah. Okay. Um, that, since the question does include me specifically, um, <laughs> no, I didn't, <laughs> basically. Um, I didn't ask, and I don't think it, I don't think they cared. It was totally fine. I mean, you know, as long as you, as long as the content has nothing to do with, uh, your employment or could, you know, make it look bad in any way. I don't think they're really uh, that interested. Yep. Okay, very good. Yeah, and, I, and when I started, I was in a Fortune 500 company, and same thing. You know, they had a written policy about it, so I just made sure I was within those guidelines, but it really wasn't too tricky, um, as I recall. Um, obviously, now, being at Tableau, um, having a blog is is not just uh, okay, it's actually great. Um, so it's a, it's a big part of being uh, in the author community that, that I'm trying to uh, you know, help foster and grow. So um, let's switch topics now. We, we talked about just getting started, and so that's a big part of it. But then also, you know, once you get over this initial hurdle of starting, there's going to be um, this notion of just mo maintaining momentum and establishing a cadence of blogs, of um, figuring out how to keep the content fresh. And there's a few questions that we're receiving already about this exact topic. So maybe I'll just uh, tag, let's see, let's start with Kelly again. So maybe Kelly, talk to us a little bit about your blogging um, pattern in terms of what frequency do you blog, what inspires you to write a new blog post, um, how many tools do you use to schedule, organize, write, things like that. Just talk about keeping your blog going. OK. Uh, yes. No organization, no schedule, <laughs> no nothing. I have about 25 posts sitting in draft, and occasionally I'll go look at them and have no idea what I had meant to do with that. <laughs> um, usually, you know, it's something that came up during the week, and I will just stay up for four hours late and write it and do it. Mm -hmm. But um, there are some things that take a lot longer, like when you're writing instructions and stuff. And so, you know, I do work on those. But I find if I put them aside for a while, then I, I never go back. So mm -hmm. I, I blog about twice a week. I try so, to. Anyway. So, Kelly, just to, to um, drill down on that, if you, what causes you or what prompts you to finish the process for one of those that are in the backlog and to push through till 2 AM and get it done? Like, what would be the reason that you did that one but not one of the others that are sitting there waiting to be done? <laughs> my, my attention issues. <laughs> so you just become oh, look, focused. shiny data over yeah. here, new data, and I, off I go, yeah. So it, and you, it is, I will it, work on something and find that the data is not really that interesting. The result isn't that interesting. So and maybe so you find, so if you find some compelling new data, you'll just, it'll kick off a process where you start something. And if that process keeps going because you continue to be excited by it, you'll finish it off. If you end up at a dead end, you'll just kind of move on. Yep. Okay. That's kind of cool. I mean, you know, hey, I guess what the takeaway there, right, is you don't have to have, you know, um, some, some personal assistant here to help you manage this thing. I mean, sometimes it's just as the spirit moves. And if Kelly's able to create an awesome blog um, just based on these random and sporadic, you know, kind of fits of passion, then great. And, and it works for her. Anybody else have a different approach, or um, you know, have a, have a kind of a different kind of way of going about things? My kind of self-enforced rule is, is to try and do one blog post a month. Uh, sometimes it's a bit quicker than that, especially leading up to this. I kind of churned a few out, um, but yeah, I try and have a sort of self-enforced rule of one a month. Um, otherwise, I just stop forgetting I did it. And um, I guess I'm a bit like Kelly in that I would, I kind of. I, nev I actually never do things and leave them in draft. I just kind of do them and finish them all in one go. So I'm quite impatient, and I don't really want to see them sat around. So um, most of the time, it's kind of written and published within the same session. My, my, general, my general rule, Ben, is if you have a good idea, 
Um, you probably should do it pretty quickly because Steve will do it if you don't. <laughs> Like the like the box and jitter plot that I was literally typing up as I read his. Uh, <laughs> see, I have an in with Mossad and knew what you were up to, uh, Andy. So, uh, yeah. Well, Peter, I also try to produce something uh, uh, about once a month, um, and these, I, don't, I don't know about the rest of you. It's, it takes me a long time. You know, it doesn't take long to come up with the idea or whatever, but to actually flesh it out, have the step-by-step -step instructions, clear images. Um, ben, you mentioned these things live on, you know, and they become um, um, a template or blueprint or instructions on, if it's not just commentary, if it's here's how you do something. Um, so uh, the, 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 uh, the jitter plot thing only took about four hours, but the one before that, the, the was Stephen Few right, you know, about the... Uh, the internal um, iron viz contest you know that took about eight hours to put together you know to get everything get the examples etc so it's 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 hard work yeah for me at least and we have a couple questions from uh, Jeffrey Felix yes about how much time do you spend on your blog per week um, so I think we've pretty much answered that. It looks like most everyone blogs about monthly. And then we have another question here from Frank Schuster. He asks, how many posts do you keep in a backlog so that you can maintain oh my the God. flow of publishing with uh, minimal stress? Does anyone have anything to add in regards to those questions? Too many. Zero. <laughs> I think I have a list of about uh, 15. I have like two in a backlog, and it's just like data sets that I want to make a viz with, and I know it will be interesting, but I just don't think it's interesting right now. But sometimes I'll open up a data set like a month later and be like, oh, actually, this is awesome. Yep, I, I'm kind of same. I, you know, I, I think when I started, I had an Excel spreadsheet that I was keeping a nice list of all the topics, and I would even put the, you know, planned launch date, blah, blah, blah. I abandoned it, and now I'm kind of like Kelly. I just do things, except in the sense I'm also like Peter in the sense that I really don't have a draft. There's nothing sitting in my WordPress draft list at all. It's just more like Jules said, just some ideas floating around of stuff I'd like to do. And then something spurs the completion of that, whether it's an event that happens or, you know, um, some reason I feel compelled to, to complete it. So... In, in, ter in terms of ideas in the backlog, I would say maybe there's about a half dozen, so not a lot. Um, but again, uh, they're all just kind of in the ether until I actually run with it. I don't have like some list or organizational tool. I just just wait till I want to kind of do something, then I go with it. Great. Okay, cool. So that's about mo maintaining momentum, which is great. Um, I think we can all attest to the fact that there's going to be those times where you've got um, a few uh, months that go by and you're sitting there going, oh, I really should blog again. It's been a while. So that's normal. Um, let's talk about the people side of it. So, you know, I think the biggest value to me in starting my blog was the connections that I got from it. So I wouldn't be on this call with any of these people at all right now if I hadn't started my blog. So the people side of it has been the most rich and so I'd like to just know a little bit from the folks here. Let's talk about this whole notion of making connections with people. So how has data blogging affected your network? And then talk also about interactions that happen on and because of your blog. So comments you get, maybe criticism, feedback, and just this interaction of kind of building relationships little by little. So um, making connections. So I'll start with, uh, with Kelly again. You could kind of talk to us a little bit about the people side of your blog. <coughs> Well, same, like you, I wouldn't be on this right now. I can't believe, actually, the connections I've made, the number of people I've met. Um, I, I could easily be a hermit in the basement. But the conference as well, you know, you make connections with people through your blog, and then all of a sudden you go to the conference and people recognize you, and or you recognize people who blog and start connecting, and... It's an amazing community. I've really never experienced anything like it. It's really nice people. Like people, there's. It's very rarely shitty. Really rarely. 
it does happen. <laughs> And the nice thing is, is that if it does happen, everybody else kind of jumps in for you. You don't have to, you know, battle it out with a troll by yourself or take the blog down. Um, with respect to, like, you know, trolls or whatever, I just, I moderate my comments so they can't get on there. I just make sure they stay out. You know, you can have free speech on somebody else's blog. <laughs> I don't need to deal with it. And um, strong criticism, not really, just a little, but, you know, um, it's like, oh, yeah, I did goof up, or I, you know, I'll change that, I'll fix it, whatever. Mm -hmm. There's been a company named Squire that keeps spamming my comments. I oh, don't know me too. I sent them an email telling them it was I did too, and, yeah. and now they're actually spamming the Tableau blog too, but... Um, <laughs> They, uh, I did, that's why I started to have to put comment moderation in there, which I don't like doing. But um, you know, thanks to one one uh, one troll. Yeah. Oh, I, I just love the really upbeat spammers. You know, wow, I really enjoyed your blog post. What incredibly insightful information you have. You should be writing many more things like this. And usually, <laughs> half the grammar is not correct. But I do the same thing, Kelly. That it's it's. Uh, it's 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 you know any crit any legit criticism I put in anything that's clearly someone trolling to get a link or something like that um, uh, I don't permit. As for the the the, the comments and criticism, you, you know, people have great ideas on how to improve on this stuff. You know that that some of the, the I'll come up with a um, a technique or something, and someone will pipe in and say, "Hey, have you tried doing this, that, or the other?" And it just ends up adding to the art and. Uh, <laughs> You know, usually comment and say what a great idea, uh, then totally forget that they came up with it and take credit for it on my end. No, um, <laughs> um, but usually we'll we'll make it way its way back into the post. But it, it just amazes me how um, people contribute to the to to the art, so to speak. And what started with, as a pretty good solution, you get nine or ten people commenting on it, and you take two or three comments, and you have an incredibly good solution by the end of it. So. It's happened. That's happened, you know, more than half a dozen times on stuff that I've written. Mm -hmm. We have another question here from I think it's Christian McDonald. He's asking, what steps do you take to get the word out about a new entry, uh, like social, or do you call folks? Um, I usually just tweet that I've got something out, and then maybe email a few people that work that I work with. That's it, and then. Usually goes from there. Twitter's, I think, is probably the best way to get to that. Yeah, I agree. I actually have, uh, since I use WordPress, there's like a publicized thing built in that will automatically tweet whenever you post. Um, so that's usually what I do. And then if it's relevant to, and something I think that will be popular, I'll put it on Reddit. Because when it comes to you know, everyone's talking about, like, mean comments and stuff. That's, that's the only place I get mean comments. Um, people on Reddit can be very critical. I don't actually don't get very many comments on my blog at all besides spam stuff. Actually, I remember the very first comment that wasn't spam that I ever got on my blog was Joe Mako telling me that I shouldn't use bubble charts. <laughs> And you're just like, hey, this is really cool, but stop using bubble charts. They're bad. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> I will say, just to follow up on Jules' point there, there's something I picked up from her is Reddit. And I, I never used Reddit until very recently. A couple of people put mine up um, for me. Um, my latest viz I put up on Reddit, and it had loads of hits straight away. Some nasty comments. Um, uh, not nasty, just, you know, snarky. <laughs> Um, but you, but you, but you do get a lot of hits from Reddit. It's, it's um, people are on there looking at Viz, and and I really like the data is beautiful Reddit because that's not just Tableau stuff. There's people doing all sorts of different things with different tools. Yeah, so it's that's... a really good source of information and inspiration, and you can get a lot of data sets from there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to mirror um, what I think Peter said: is Twitter is really been the best tool for me. I posted a single post 
tweeted it out, and the next thing I know, I have you know, 10, 15, 20 new Twitter followers um, and people retweeting my blog post. So if you're just getting started with a blog post, um, Twitter is a great tool to, to get the word out. And what I'd add to that is in 2013, I started a data remixed Facebook page, and I'm starting to grow that uh, as well little by little now. You know, that's a different audience for me. It's more friends and family. But, uh, but at the same time, um, I, I definitely think it's an effective tool to more uh, hopefully start threads of conversation. Um, and, you know, so maybe, Andy, you know, you work there, and I know you have a Viz Wiz Facebook page as well. Can you talk to us a little bit about that and what, how you see as Facebook playing a role in helping a blogger get the word out about their posts and their ideas? Well, I mean, you can always get the word out by spending advertising money if you have a Facebook page. So um, I can uh -huh. always highly encourage people to spend money on Facebook. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> that was a softball. No, I, I, yeah. Well, I get free <laughs> advertising credits, so I get to publicize my own for free. Um, uh -huh. So that's nice. Um, but uh, but I don't you know I don't write to publicize. I write because I want to remember how I did something. If other people read it, that's great. I don't care if anybody reads it. Um, so I think I come at it from a little bit different perspective than some of some of the other guys here, which is fine. I mean, uh, it's uh, but as far as Facebook is concerned, um, the thing that I think is better about it is that you can have a conversation in comments versus. 140 characters, um, so uh, you you know, and then people will follow up with messages after that, uh, you know, private messages and stuff. So I, I think it can lead to richer conversations than uh, than Twitter can. Um, but I use both. I mean, I I I'm not active on Twitter. It, it may seem like I have, but that's because of uh, if this then that post stuff for me. Um, so that's you know I, I I don't remember the last time that I looked at my uh, my whatever the equivalent of the news feed is in Twitter. Uh, the only time I'm ever on there is when somebody like mentions me or something like that. Got it. So Andy, you brought up a good point. Uh, you use a tool called If This Then That, and I think Joel, you do as well. Uh, we have a couple other questions here from people asking what other tools we use uh, to to help blog. So maybe we can go into that a little bit. Yeah, that sounds great. So tools. So this is really around. So it's, uh, Scott Struhl asks, what other tools do you use to create your blogs? So maybe we can. Obviously, we all use Tableau. Um, you know, probably some of us use different CMSs. But what other tools do you find you you know are are going to or using? Whether it's organizing your blog posts or writing them or promoting them or what kind of what's the other software tools or web tools that you go to time and again and I, I use um, I use Windows Live Writer to do my to write my blog posts um, and uh, I just don't like bloggers interface for you know actually typing up a blog um, and then I use Nagit for photo editing for you know, doing screenshots and things like that, um, and then that's probably about it. My kind of shameful secret is that my only other tool apart from Blogger is PowerPoint, and I basically do all my design work in PowerPoint. I do any kind of like graphical editing in PowerPoint, um, and that's it. That and Blogger. That's the only thing I use. And for me, um, Ghost has a pretty good authoring experience. The only problem it has right now is it doesn't have spell check built in. So uh, being English uh, <clears throat> is my second language, I, I do have a tendency of having lots of typos. So I'll actually write my post in the Ghost interface, and then I'll copy and paste it into Word, run spell check, <laughs> correct my issues, and then paste it back into Ghost. Um, but I also use Photoshop uh, for my photo editing. And then I use a program called Jing, J-I-N-G, uh, for my screenshotting. Um, and then I also use a program called Workflowy to outline kind of my ideas for blog posts. Uh, it's a pretty cool tool if, uh, if anyone's familiar with outliners. The only other thing I really used besides just typing straight into my WordPress um, is finding um, finding GIFs on reaction GIFs, Tumblr. That's really all I do. Like, you know, looking up, like, okay, I'm shocked. 
I need something that expresses that. My blog is very emotional. Nice to hear that it's, it doesn't require this massive number of tools to use. I just use WordPress and Snagit, although WordPress is not always as uh, Tableau friendly as I would like it to be. Yeah. So I'm just looking at my program list here on the left hand side. I got GIMP it would be one I'd add to it. Um, starting to learn and use Import IO a little bit for scraping. Uh, I also uh, am guilty of a lot of PowerPoint graphics, Peter, so you and I are in the same boat on that one. Um, Snagit, uh, use that all the time, literally every day. Um, and so, yeah, I, I also don't think that's a daunting list of tools. I'm WordPress, I'm doing WordPress.org uh, with a media temple hosted blog, so that didn't take that long to learn. It really wasn't that complicated. Um, it took a little while, while to set up and get it right, but... Um, but yeah, once I got the flow, it was it was kind of you know, smooth sailing. Um, by the way, I'm just typing into the chat window right now. There's a couple questions about people wanting to see links to the bloggers, and I so I am actually just typing those in there. If you go to the chat window for the people who are listening in, um, I'm going to just put these links through here one by one. So while I'm doing that, maybe let's uh, let's talk a little bit about. Well, Mike, is there another good question that would be uh, pertinent to pull up at this point? Because there's a couple other subjects we can go into. Unless uh, I, th I think, hey Ben, I see one on yeah. there from uh, Matthew Reeve about how do we read each other's stuff? Mm -hmm. um, how do we read each other's blogs? Um, I think um, for me that became a challenge once Google Reader went away. Uh, yeah. But I now use uh, feed. I use Feedly now, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of people have also that have blogs and also have Facebook pages now. So obviously, I'll follow them on Facebook. Um, but I'm. I actually had a conversation with uh, Emily uh, earlier today about this same thing. And um, one of the things that I'm finding interesting now is that there's so many good blogs now. I just simply don't have time to read them all, and I always feel like I'm missing something. Mm. Um, so that's been the biggest, you know. So I use Feedly for for as an RSS reader because um, I like the sharing you can do from there, and I use you know obviously Facebook. I don't use Twitter to read blog to get anybody's blog links, um, and that's that's really it for me. But I think that's an important. I, what what. How do the rest of you keep up with the content, or do you not? I've started um, subscribing by email to everybody's because, like you say, without Google Reader, I've, I've had a hard time keeping up with everything. I also use Feedly, but mostly Twitter when people post. Yeah, I use a combination of Feedly and Twitter, but like, like Andy, it is, it is now getting a little bit difficult to keep up because there are a lot of good blogs out there. A lot of different things, and you know, some of the articles are quite in depth as well, and you really need to pay attention to them and give them a good read. So, finding the time is becoming more of an issue. So, um, things like Feedly definitely help kind of sort that out for you a little bit. I think it'd be quite good actually if, if maybe um, Tableau could help collate some of the um, blogs into a Feedly file or whatever you call it, and, and have that yep. somewhere to distribute. It's very, very I was just thinking the same thing. The, the yeah. information lab has done something to that to some degree. They have their Tableau hub that I found very useful. Yeah, so I think it's a great idea. It's a good suggestion. You know, we, we have um, that viz we've made of a handful of blogs, a few dozen of them, in fact, and hopefully that will continue to build. There's just a visual and interactive way to find topics that you're interested in. But um, feedly, a Feedly list or, you know, that kind of a thing would be great. I, you know, I... Google Reader was huge for me, and I used Feedly, but I just don't find that I've adopted it to the same level, and I'm not quite sure why. I don't think there's anything. Oh, really? Yeah, I really can't. I really can't say why. I, I, I Google Reader had been a part of my kind of everyday flow, and Feedly exists. I have an account. I follow a bunch of blogs. For some reason, I'm just not very good. I only maybe go into it a couple times a month. Um, and again, I yeah. can't really explain why. I, you know, for me, Mike and Jewel, a big part of our daily job is. Um, is following up on what's going on in you know out there, whether we're picking a biz of the day, um, whether we're you know kind of researching what Tableau public authors are doing. So, but even even that, even in the fact that it's such a big part of my my job, I still also feel the same way that there's so much great content out there that it does feel hard to keep up. Um, 
And I think, you know, to me, it's it's one of the things that pop up on my radar, and those are things that typically, again, you know, get tweeted or get I get a mention, and so it brings my attention to it. I get an email, so I go to it uh, from someone specifically. Those are the things that kind of, unless I'm going out and dedicating part of my day to literally going through and finding what's out there, I need to have something that triggers it for me. Um, but Feedly is, I really, it's not that I don't recommend it, I really do, and, and probably this year would be a good year for me to, since, especially since there's so many new blogs coming out, it would probably be a good opportunity to start using that a little bit more. Yeah, it can be overwhelming to try to keep up with all the blogs, though. Um, I don't know if, how many people will read the best of Tableau web that Andy Cogri started doing, and I've covered for him a couple of times. So there's been a couple months where I've had to have like my finger on the pulse and knowing what's going on. And it was a full-time job trying to keep up with all the blogs. There's just so many of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, we got about seven minutes left here, um, and so there's a there's a couple questions I want to get to, you know, but not a lot of time. So maybe the next thing I'd like to know is just what is your 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 biggest or most kind of relevant piece of advice that you would give to someone who's either thinking of running a data blog or who runs one, what would you say as far as words of wisdom to pass along? Mm. I would say write what you're passionate about. That'll keep you motivated. Write, write for yourself, I guess I should say. It, like when Ben, when you asked me to write, you know, the blog post the other the other week, uh, I think you published last week or whatever. It, I found it much harder to write for somebody else than to write something that I wanted to write. Cool. And that's a, I don't know. Yeah. That's a answer to the question by Brandy Beals. Uh, this person was asking, can a blog include other topics in addition to data? So. Um, I mean, that's a that's a great point. Blog about what you care about. Otherwise, think, you'll find that you're not blogging at all. Right. Ultimately, you know, this is like, this is your free time. It's not a job. So if you're not enjoying blogging and blogging about something that you like doing, then um, you're probably better off watching TV or going to the pub, um, which often is a better example anyway. But um, you just you've got to do something that you enjoy. If you don't enjoy it, don't do it. If you do enjoy it, do it. How about you, Kelly? What's uh, what's some words of wisdom that you pass along to people who are data blogging? Um, I think pretty much what the guys have said. Don't be too self-critical. Don't think you don't have anything to offer. You know, you you've got a perspective. It's going to be different, and then somebody else might grab onto it. It might be just exactly what they needed to hear. Um, the other is, it's not that permanent. If you don't like it, go back and, and delete the blog. I've done it with <laughs> the posting. I don't consider that it, it has to stay like a website can never change. I change mine all the time. I don't worry about it. So it's not like you're etching it in stone and don't have the fear that what you're doing is so permanent that you won't be able to undo it if you don't yeah. like it. Yeah. Yeah, that takes the pressure off, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, how about you, Steve? I know you talked earlier in the call about being useful and, and really focusing on your specialty. Is there anything you'd add to that as far as words of wisdom? No, either the uh, thing I don't really have much to add besides what other people have said. I, know I would hate for someone to be intimidated or feel that, oh my gosh, their first post, they've got to change the world or something like that. Um, uh, don't don't be too hard on yourself. Get something out there. Get an idea. Get some feedback. and. Uh, be proud that you've contributed to um, the art. All right, what do you think, Joel? Um, I think if, you, if you're having a hard time when you're getting started, I know I did, just trying to come up with ideas of what I could show, because I know there's so many people out there that are so much better at this than me. Instead of trying to teach people something, just ask questions. Say, like, hey, I made this. I don't really know what to do about this. I don't. I don't really like this, but I don't have any opinion on how to fix it. What do you guys think? And that's a really easy way to build a community around your blog because there's going to be someone that comes along that has an opinion on how you did that. And if you're just straight up asking, then it will be beneficial for everyone because you get to learn something. Your audience will get to learn something. Someone will get to feel smart that day when they help you. So 
So it wins all around. And, and Jewel, like... just don't use bubble charts, okay? <laughs> <laughs> And so Mike, how about you? You recently started. What, what would you say are some kind of key learnings for you out of the gate? Um, I have a tendency of having lots of ideas and thinking, oh, this would be, make a good blog post and this would make a good blog post. But I never actually sit down and write the blog post because my main focus has been, well, I want this to be a data blog, and so it kind of has to be Tableau related. And I do a lot of Tableau related things at work and at home, but not all of them are really, I guess, won't fit on my blog because other people have already covered the subject, so there's no point in me rehashing it. Um, but I think what I need to start doing is actually just blogging more, finding out my voice, and it doesn't necessarily have to include Tableau. Um, because one thing I've noticed with other people's blogs is that they might have a Tableau nugget once in a while, and so the Tableau community might do that and read about that, but they still have other blog posts that maybe aren't necessarily targeted at Tableau users. And that's still fine because, again, a blog is um, just kind of a representation of, of, of your web profile. So uh, post whatever you feel is important to you. And if it just so happens to have some uh, knowledge or tips and tricks about Tableau, you know, the community will come to it and will read that blog post. Yeah, I think that's, that's all really, I mean, just focusing on having confidence in your voice to me, you know, is, is yeah, you may think there's other amazing stuff out there. A lot of the folks here on the panel produce great work. It's easy to be intimidated by that. I've been there. I've felt that too. But just have confidence in the fact that your own unique perspective on this subject is going to be valuable. You know, no, no one else out there has your same background, your same experiences, your same hobbies. All of those things produce ideas and thoughts that you can articulate. Um, that no one else would have. And so that's what a blog to me is. It's a way to get those thoughts out and um, you know, just have the confidence that it'll, it'll be uh, good for you and good for other folks as well. I think that's one thing that all of us can attest to is it's been beneficial for us in, in many, many ways. And we've also heard um, you know, feedback from people saying that it was beneficial for them too, and that can be very rewarding. Um, OK, great. So listen, we're, we're pretty much at the top of the hour here. Um, I want to thank everyone, first of all, on the panel. Um, you guys were great. This was fun. It was kind of an experiment for us. Uh, but I think it was a success. So thanks to Mike for all the audio, visual, and getting this set up. And, and again, thanks to everyone, especially, um, uh, you know, just, well, the four of you all for, for dialing in. Andy from dialing in way over there in Israel. Um, hope the rest of your trip goes well and safe travels home. Um, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So for the rest of you folks, there are some still some great questions here. And unfortunately, we did not get to all of them. But we're going to capture them. We'll take a look at them and see if there's a way we can maybe respond in various ways to some of these questions. Um, this YouTube video will be uh, recorded, so in case you want to go back to it and uh, yeah, maybe refer to some of the answers, uh, that's possible as well. And there's a Google chat, as I mentioned, or there's a chat window where you can see the links to everyone's blog. And we'll follow up as well with some of those links. So I guess just to close, um, you know, on behalf of kind of the, t the team here in Tableau, does it <laughs> I mean, everybody is so now you have graduated, Peter, uh, from the School of Tableau Blogging Hangout. Um, so that's wonderful. And I think now we've got a clown and a some a queen. Is a princess. Clown? You gotta love that. They have these effects. It's just brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, you can make yourself. Look like my kids would love that part. So I don't know. I'm not even sure what that is. There we go. It's just fun. Well, hey, everyone, um, we got a Google, what is it, some kind of a Google bandana. Great. Um, thanks, everyone, again. Um, happy Tuesday to you all, and we have a great day. And let's keep in touch, everyone, going forward. And with that, we will wrap it up. So that's that.